Ah, what's up everyone? Uh, I didn't actually script out this video for today, so I'm sorry if I start going all over the place. Uh, normally I script the videos, but uh, today I'm gonna wing it. Today I wanted to share with you guys uh, some behind the scenes footage of the short film that I shot recently, COVID Standoff. I actually wanted to film these at the beginning of this year in 2020, but I was busy with a lot of work stuff and that's, that's always been a habit that I've consistently done is, oh my God, this freaking birds. It's just, uh, throwing off my train of thought. Anyway, as you all know, uh, COVID-19 happened and lockdowns and um, all that stuff. So I wasn't able to start as soon as I wanted to and I had put this off for a pretty long time. For me, I've taken the time to reflect and really kind of figure out what it is that I wanna be doing in life and uh, basically the time I spent in isolation. I wanna be focusing more on filmmaking. Uh, I do a lot of client work outside of YouTube and the quarantine got kind of got me thinking that I don't wanna be doing that for forever because as fun as it is, it's not something that's extremely satisfying to me and I know that it wouldn't be very satisfying to me in the long term. Luckily, uh, the clients that I work with are able to support me in that endeavor to do that. I don't think it came out perfect, but it definitely was like a good exercise for me and it definitely was a big learning experience. I've always been a DP uh, shooting films and I don't direct that often and I don't I think the last time I directed something was probably about a year ago, so it felt I did feel a little rusty on it. But anyways, I'm kind of rambling now, so we are gonna move on to the behind the scenes footage. So like I had said before, I'm normally a DP, but when I'm directing things, I prefer to be hands off of the camera just because directing, there's just so many little things that you have to pay attention to that operating the camera to me just becomes more of a distraction. And I was given the opportunity to be a little bit more hands off uh, due to the wonderful team that I I had uh, working with me and my good friend Alex let me use his Teradek Ace 500. Oh shit, got, yes, sir. got a wireless signal. Yeah, I just got that bro. Which is a wireless transmitter that allows you to watch the camera image from a director's monitor, which was really helpful because I didn't have to be looking over the camera operator's shoulder. And I have a good friend, Fidel, who wants to learn how to be a DP. And I try to teach him as much as I can how to be like a cinematographer, but there's only so much you can really do when you're working on set and you need to be focusing more on getting the shots over like teaching someone. So I felt that having him be the camera operator and I basically just DP without touching Touching the camera would be a lot more beneficial. I was able to direct the actors and also direct on where all the lighting needs to be set up so while he's on the camera he can actually like physically see uh, everything that's being set up in front of him and how it affects the camera image. And as far as lighting it we were doing day exteriors so lighting can get a little bit tricky sometimes but honestly the things that I use to light uh, day exteriors are actually very cheap like I'm just using reflectors and bounce boards and DIY reflectors. I don't strongly recommend DIY stuff, but it does help you out when you're in a pinch. We used a combination of C stands and really cheap light stands, which, which was kind of a pain, but luckily there's a lot of rocks around that we can like put on the stands as to use as sandbags because we didn't have that many sandbags. What I used is actually like a DIY uh, projection screen, which can basically double as a diffusion silk. Basically what we did is we clamped the screen to the C stands and and the ghetto light stands and we just stretched it as far as we could and placed the actors underneath it so that kind of just acts as a shade to them so the sunlight is going through this soft white material and it's softening up the light and it looks really good on the skin and the direct sunlight doesn't look so harsh you can technically place people in shade and get a similar effect but in my opinion um, shade isn't always reliable so when you're using a diffuser and using it to diffuse the direct sunlight that's hitting the actor's face you're also going to be losing a little bit of exposure on the actor so I brighten it in camera just a little bit just to compensate and luckily the GH5S the camera that I shot this on it has a really good log profile and can give you a lot of flexibility in the highlights and the shadows so luckily brightening it to 
properly expose the skin, doesn't affect the background highlights too much. And then for some of the other shots, I would have another crew member hold up the silver side reflector and reflect the sunlight onto the back of an actor's head to create a backlight on them because there were a few times where I felt like the darkness of their hair was blending in with the black background of the trees. And these are very simple techniques that honestly, you can spend less than a hundred dollars and get a very similar look to this. So the next thing I wanted to bring up is the lenses that I used. I used the Sigma 18 to 35 and the Sigma 50 to 100. I mostly shot on the Sigma 50 to 100 mainly because I wanted to play around with like the whole telephoto look. You can get a lot of cool shots out of this. And to me, it looks a lot more interesting just because it's a lot easier to blur the background on a telephoto lens. And over the quarantine, I was actually watching The Hangover and I really liked the telephoto wide shot that they used when they're meeting up with Chow trying to find Doug. So that was inspiration behind the telephoto wide shot that I shot with uh, when Brian enters into the scene and Tron enters into the scene. And another benefit of using a telephoto lens is it's a lot easier to get a boom mic a lot closer to the actor's face. So you can get much more crisper audio when you're shooting your wide shots as opposed to if you shot with like a 24 millimeter or something, it's pretty much impossible to get clean audio with a boom mic. With that focal length, you would have to rely pretty much on your lavaliers. I wanted to try to get the audio as crisp as possible because even though I'm a DP, I definitely see the value in having much cleaner audio than your actual picture. Luckily, there's both, so worked out pretty well. So in these wide shots right here, the boom mic was actually just off the corner of the frame. So it was, it was pretty close. And the audio that I used in the final film is actually the audio from the boom mic. Right now, I wanted to show you guys uh, me recording the Bane voiceovers that I'm gonna be ADRing over George's voice. It's pretty easy. All you really need is a coffee mug and also kind of copy the tonality in his voice a little bit. It just sounds like, ah, oh, you think COVID is your ally. And then you put this in front of your mouth and he goes, ah, oh, you think COVID is your ally? It's pretty easy, so enjoy. Ah, oh, you think COVID is your ally? You were merely adopted by the virus. I was born in it, molded by it. It would be extremely shitty. Next thing I wanted to talk about is the directing part of it. Directing comedy can be kind of tricky and I'm still learning a lot about it myself. And it's been a very fun process. But one of the things that I've really picked up along the way that I've learned from other good directors is that when you're directing comedy or really just anything in general, it's really important that you let the actors kind of just express themselves in the scene. They're bringing like their character, their personality to the table and following and staying married to what's on the script isn't always gonna benefit the piece as a whole. There's times where the actors are going to come in and then they're going to improvise a lot and just enhance the scenes that were already written. Giving them that flexibility um, a majority of the time actually makes the scenes a lot better. There were some scenes that were a little bit specific and I did want to stick to the script to be just because the lines were important in moving the scene forward. But in this scene in particular where Brian and Tron first meet each other, in the original script I didn't actually write a majority of of what Tron uh, said in the short. It was actually just l letting him improvise and letting him just kind of wing it and come up with different things and making sure that I'm guiding that improv to service the story and make sure that everything makes sense. 23. Okay. Oh, your shitty ass back up, nigga. Where the money at? Oh, oh, right. Um, damn it, George has it. What the fuck is George? Oh, he's my partner. Man, you come know. over with that candy apple ass shit, man. Oh, no, no, you don't get it. I mean, he has a girlfriend and, I mean, I'm single right now, but you know, I'm looking. He, he, anyway. Shit, um, I can't tell. Thank you. Uh, he's going to be coming and he's got the money, so. If oh, 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 no money, no deal, motherfucker, back up. No, no, I, I get it. No money, no deal, back the fuck up, man. Okay, we're just talking in circles here. Um, Let's just wait for a little bit. Let's cool down. Hey, I ain't got time, bro. The feds on me. Uh, this shit hot. All right, all right. Uh, okay, oh, well, um. Let's uh, play a game. A game? Back your gay ass up, man. Come on, man. Six feet, nigga, six feet. Okay, all right. <laughs> 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 Let's do another one. That was good. That was pretty good, though.
<laughs> when you do the improvi yeah. pro improvising, let's throw in more COVID references okay, too. Okay, 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 okay. Giving them the freedom to kind of just come up with different things um, each take just gives you a lot of different options to play around with in post. So the next thing that I wanted to share with you guys is the music that I got created for the short, which was created by the amazingly talented Flora Chang. Me and my director friend Alex have been working with her on some music video projects lately, which I will link somewhere up here. And she also made a behind the scenes video showing the process of her creating the music for the piece. So I will show that to you right now. All right, so we're going to add the first layer, which is the hybrid symphony. I use the hybrid symphony because it adds more accents than traditional orchestra. Moving on to percussion, let's add some damage. Now we are gonna add some explosiveness to all the accents. Here we go. Let's enjoy this cobra moment. <laughs> Alright, I recorded some viola and other instruments. And here is the final result. And that is how it's done. Hope you guys enjoyed. So from a more logistical and producing standpoint, I'm still learning a lot when it comes to producing. And I'm pretty confident when I say that I feel like I have a firm understanding of like the creative and technical stuff, but doing the more logistical stuff is something that uh, doesn't exactly come natural to me. So there's a lot of little things that I screwed up on on this shoot. Like I definitely wish I brought more water and definitely stuck more of them in a cooler. I should have brought more coolers because I only brought one and it was for food and it was really hot that day and just having more more shade for people to sit under definitely would have um, cut out a lot of the problems that I did have on set. Uh, so all in all, it was a really fun shoot and I learned a lot and I definitely learned a lot more about directing and a lot more about producing. And it's not really something that you can learn just by watching YouTube or reading a book or, or something like stuff like that is just stuff that you have to learn through experience. And to me, um, putting myself in the uncomfortable position of like having to lead and put all these things together um, really just showed me like kind of where my weak spots are so for my next shoots i can definitely see like where i need to improve on just utilizing my resources a lot better and trying to take majority of the work like off of my shoulders because i kind of get in my head sometimes and think to myself oh i gotta do this i gotta do that but like oh but i don't have this and whatever it's like you don't need to have everything you don't need to know everything that's what the purpose of having a team there for you is for. Having people chip in their resources and their talents is what helps um, carry carry you in the areas that you are a lot weaker in and overall it just benefits and services the film a lot more that's pretty much all i wanted to say um i just wanted to say thank you guys for watching the video uh, this was a very fun project for me to work on and i definitely want to make more if you haven't seen the short uh it'll show up like right here or something wherever those end card things end up showing up uh check out the bloopers they're pretty funny thank you guys again for watching and i'll see you guys later peace Oh, God.